Before attempting to calibrate the AC range, you should always check the heater voltage of the vacuum tube situated inside the AC probe. And depending on whether it's a 2-01C or an EA53, the heater voltage is to be set accordingly for each one of those tubes. The, I have a 2 dash 01c in here and that requires 5 volts whereas the EA53 is a 6.3 volt tube so as you can see we're, what we've got here is this is pin 7 of the ballast tube and I'm measuring between that and the chassis I've got a chassis connection over here and we're getting 4.2 Four, four, basically 4.2 volts AC across the heater so that's obviously been maladjusted at some stage and what you have to do is you just get a screwdriver and pop it into resistor R50 which is at the top of the chassis and if I can get this to go in which a little bit of trouble okay so we can adjust that now and that's we can adjust that up to the 5 volts so that we know we've got the correct and uh, correct amount of emission for the tube so that's close enough and it just will probably settle out a little bit I might just back that off just a, a tad so we're down to 5 volts but basically once it, it settles out the the ballast will maintain a reasonable amount of regulation there. So that should be good enough. So now we're ready to actually start checking calibration of the AC section of uh, the equipment. To check the AC inputs, I'm only going to check low voltages and uh, relatively low frequency in this and we're using a Booten 1120 audio analyzer for this just use the generator section uh, on this uh, at the moment it's displaying level at one volt RMS and it's set up also for a frequency of thousand Hertz so We'll use this to at least go up to about 6 volts on the low ranges of the HP 14B just to have a look at whether the calibration needs any adjustment or not. After adjusting the zero on the DC range then we switch over to AC and 1 volt and I've got 0 volts actually applied to the, to the instrument okay so we've got zero there and then if I set one volt output and I'll just now take the short off and connect our input and as we can see we're reading just slightly low now on this the one volt range is here in the red and on this I'll just zoom in so that you can see and I'll just zoom out a little bit as you can see we're slightly below one volt and as I said on the red range here this particular scale has faded and the red uh, looks more like a a, a, f a light fawn color but um, this because of the non-linearity in the diode the low voltage ranges for uh, the uh, AC uh, have a, 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 a the scale is uh, non-linear down the bottom end so 
what I'll do is adjust R35 which is the scaling or the, uh, the gain setting for the 1 volt AC range and we can set that up so we just bring that pretty close to there and actually it does that does line up with the 1 volt range on the top of the DC scale however it goes on linear as you go down so what we'll do now is actually just check where we're at so if I say make that 500 millivolts and see where we go and if we read that here we're reading just a little bit high um, we're reading at about 5 520 so if I'm doing the math right that should be about 2% of full scale plus 2% full scale so it's reading slightly high now if we go to say 200 millivolts and we read that we're seeing that's about 220 as well and uh, so once again that's still about 2% high so if we go back to 1 volt and we're still reading about one volt so all right so the next step is go to the three volt range and one volt here now is on this lower scale this is the 3 volt AC range and it's reading a little bit high but what we need to do first is set that to 3 volts and it is reading a fraction high there so what we need to do next is have a look at adjusting the 3 volt gain setting pot so adjusting the 3 volt gain setting pot which is R39 we just bring that down a touch and now let's say we go back to one volt and it is reading a, a bit under 1.1 volts and what I'll do now I'll turn this up to 10 volts and we drop we drop back to the lower range and it gets quite non-linear right at the bottom but we'll bring that up to six volts which is our maximum that we've got and that is actually reading quite high on there however I'm I'm wrong here because I'm reading on the red scale and these are only for this is a trick that you've got to remember with these you can get yourself confused top scale here is only for 1 volt AC bottom scale here is for only for 3 volts AC and then you return back to the the DC range scale here for the uh, the the tens and the thirties or you know the the ones and the threes for uh, uh, for me measuring anything above the three volt scale so we're actually quite close we're quite close to six volts just probably not even a percent error there yeah. so that's reading quite well so there's there's the AC measurement I won't go through the rest of it it's just continuing on to adjust more and more pots there's adjustment pots all up the range here so there's the AC range is at least checked if not fully calibrated finally I'm going to calibrate and check the resistance range or ohms range on this HP 14B vacuum tube voltmeter to do the resistance checks 
we have a Danbridge over here, Danbridge Decade Box, which gives me lowest range steps of 10 ohms and up to steps of 1 mega ohm. So it's quite a range that that uh, Decade Box has. And we can verify the performance of the 410B. So first up, I'll just zoom in. adjust the camera so we can see the meter. Now at the moment I actually have it zeroed and we're just about ready to start doing the calibration procedure for the ohms range. So what we do next is set to the ohms range and set to the uh, times R times 10 and if we just zoom in again the meter you will see that we're not reading infinity we actually have to read infinity uh, for that so we set the ohms adjust so that we can read infinity and we just set that fairly closely I'm doing this through the camera so I, it, I have to just check by eye that looks pretty pretty good so we have that set there now the next step is to set to the resistance times one range and you'll see a shift in the pointer and it's gone high slightly so it's gone past the infinity mark and then what we do is we actually have to adjust R49 uh, from the back panel to uh, bring that back to infinity. So we'll do that next. Okay, now we just uh, make a slight adjustment and bring the resistance times one range to infinity. So that's done. Then the next step is to short together the common and the ohms cable and that should go to zero. Uh, we use the zero control to actually set the zero point once again and we'll just see how that's tracking let's get that as close as we can okay so now we should be pretty well ready to um, to do some checks so we'll just zoom out again and uh, now we'll hook up the decade box <coughs> What we'll do is we'll just take these probes off and place on these banana connections and then we can just plug that straight into the decade box. we go we'll plug that one in and that one in and we're actually at zero and we're indicating zero ohms there pretty well so that's that's good now if I we're on uh, R times one so if I just click this and there's our 10 ohms and if we go to what I'll do is I'll zoom in again so you can see let that focus okay so we're reading 10 ohms and then 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 all the way up to 100 But if we go 
now onto the times 10 range we'll go back we'll show 10 on there and we're reading pretty well spot on there so I'll just uh, run this back to here and we are actually on this range just so showing slightly our zero position is slightly out so we'll just re-zero that so we can check our and there we go there's a hundred two hundred three hundred four hundred five hundred and so on and as we go up the ranges I'll just do a quick do a, do a quick demonstration that's now 1k and if we go up the range again that's 10k and we go up the range again and that's 100k and we go up the range again and that's 1 meg and in fact if we go up one further range so that is the range by 1 meg we can actually wind this up to 10 meg and there we go 10 meg so it's reading quite well for what it is.